recording. I think I'm ready. Okay. Here's the clap. Okay. Welcome to our first new <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to our first New Frontier community update for Civilization 6. We're going to be walking you through some of the free updates for releasing this month. The free updates that we put out after the launch of Gathering Storm gave us the opportunity to provide you with awesome new content balance tweaks and fixes. But more importantly, it allowed us to stay in touch with our community on a more regular basis. Where's my cat? With the launch of the Mayan Grand Columbia pack, we've already begun implementing changes based on the feedback we've heard directly from you on our social channels, on the Civilization subreddit, and Sif Fanatics. Are you guys doing like the sort of like the hard cuts? For example, we fixed some exploits like the ability to choose multiple Pantheon bonuses. An exploit to combat strength and movement speed from upgrading a unit in your great general. Did you use these exploits? An exploit allowing a free policy change after completing Civic. Did you choose multiple Pantheon bonuses in multiplayer? And an exploit allowing multiple copies of a district in the same city. I would never do that. If you never use these exploits, great job. Thank you. If you did, you still have our respect. You just have to play fairly now. Speaking of which, we noticed that some of you were earning diplomatic victories in Gathering Storm with all kinds of shenanigans. How did that happen? You're polluting heavily to increase the number of aid requests that you can win. You're eradicating enemy civilizations so that there's no one left to say you can't be world leader. Well, that's very clever, but it's not very diplomatic. So we're making those play styles less effective. We're increasing favor penalty on excess pollution and introducing a new favor penalty uh, for players who own foreign original capitals. To make victory more viable for actually diplomatic players, we're changing the diplomatic victory resolution to only remove two victory points, not three. This means if you play your cards right in Congress, every session will get you closer to victory. Finally, we're changing when the victory triggers to avoid surprise victories. Points are now counted at the start of your turn, so you can no longer win with points that you would actually lose in the World Congress. Palenque is now a Mayan city, so we've renamed the city-state of Palenque to Mitla. We made a bunch of UI changes, including text size options for the chat panel, page history for the Civilpedia, and the ability to manually resize the offers and inventory panels during diplomacy. Cities now show the actual production cost for units and maintenance. If you want the base cost for those things, you can still find them in the Civilpedia. This month, we have even more balance changes for those of you playing with the Gathering Storm expansion. We tweaked over a dozen religious beliefs. Some are stronger, some are weaker, and some are brand new. Our goal here is to provide interesting and balanced choices as your religion evolves. The Warrior Monk's belief, in addition to providing the cool units it did before, will now allow holy sites to culture bomb adjacent tiles when they finish construction. Dari Mare building, with its mysterious eternal flame, is now immune to the earthly flames of natural disaster. Speaking of awesome buildings, faithful cities with world wonders will now get extra science, culture, faith, and gold from the new sacred places belief. Finally, we've increased the base tile yields for Yosemite and the Eye of Sahara to better align their powers with the other natural wonders. In addition to balance changes like these, each community update will offer a new feature. It could be a new scenario, a free game mode, or a way to customize your setup. This month though, our PC players are in for a real treat. Our major addition for this community update is Red Death Season 2. We're adding two exciting new factions, zombies and aliens. The zombie faction is led by a brain in a jar, which makes total sense, right? When a zombie horde kills a non-zombie unit, it makes more zombies. Of course, zombies kind of fall apart over time because they take damage each turn, which aliens don't. Of course, aliens came to the world to overthrow it, and they did a great job because they have a cloaking ability that allows them to sneak attack. I, I can hear them walking or sneak away. I'm recording. Can, uh, I'm sorry, it'll be over soon. <laughs> but their ride out hasn't arrived yet. So the thin man and the greys have to wait it out like everyone else. Good luck, commander. <laughs> Additionally, each faction, including your old favorites from Red Death season one, now have their own unique abilities. Also with our alien psionic abilities. We sensed you missed a certain voice. Hear that? So Sean Bean is now narrating Red Dead. That's the wasteland wind. We've also added observer mode for those of you who slipped to the great beyond a little too soon. 
and kick voting for the real barbarians among you. <laughs> so that's our first community update for the new frontier. Please stay tuned in the coming months. We have even more new features, new balance tweaks, updates, features, and more new features. Okay, you're doing great, man. Thank you. You're just saying that. Hit that subscribe button, go to sleep, stay indoors, shop local. Why am I doing this on camera? Why am I saying these things? <laughs> Make sure you subscribe to our Civilization YouTube and social channels to stay on top of all the latest with the new Frontier Pass. Just smash that like button. Civ fans, you are the best fans in gaming. Thank you for joining us for a taste of the free content that we've already added and will continue to add over the next year. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. For taking one more turn.